Jane Austen Jane Austen was an English novelist whose works of romantic fiction, set among the landed gentry, earned her a place as one of the most widely read writers in English literature. Her realism, biting irony and social commentary have gained her historical importance among scholars and critics. Austen lived her entire life as part of a close-knit family located on the lower fringes of the English landed gentry. She was educated primarily by her father and older brothers as well as through her own reading. The steadfast support of her family was critical to her development as a professional writer. Her artistic apprenticeship lasted from her teenage years into her thirties. During this period, she experimented with various literary forms, including the epistolary novel which she then abandoned, and wrote and extensively revised three major novels and began a fourth. From 1811 until 1816, with the release of Sense and Sensibility, 1811, Pride and Prejudice, 1813, Mansfield Park, 1814, and Emma, 1816, she achieved success as a published writer. She wrote two additional novels, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion, both published posthumously in 1818, and began a third, which was eventually titled Sanditon, but died before completing it. Austen's works critique the novels of sensibility of the second half of the 18th century and are part of the transition to 19th century realism. Her plots, though fundamentally comic, highlight the dependence of women on marriage to secure social standing and economic security. Her works, though usually popular, were first published anonymously and brought her little personal fame and only a few positive reviews during her lifetime. But the publication in 1869 of her nephew's A Memoir of Jane Austen introduced her to a wider public, and by the 1940s she had become widely accepted in academia as a great English writer. The second half of the 20th century saw a proliferation of Austen's scholarship and the emergence of a Jeanette fan culture. Life and Career Biographical information concerning Jane Austen is famously scarce, according to one biographer. Only some personal and family letters remain, by one estimate only 160 out of Austen's 3,000 letters are extant, and her sister Cassandra, to whom most of the letters were originally addressed, burned the greater part of the ones she kept and censored those she did not destroy. Other letters were destroyed by the heirs of Admiral Francis Austen, Jane's brother. Most of the biographical material produced for 50 years after Austen's death was written by her relatives and reflects the family's biases in favor of good quiet Aunt Jane. Scholars have unearthed little information since. Family Austen's parents, George Austen, 1731-1805, and his wife Cassandra, 1739-1827, were members of substantial gentry families. George was descended from a family of woolen manufacturers, which had risen through the professions to the lower ranks of the landed gentry. Cassandra was a member of the prominent Lee family. They married on April 26, 1764 at Walcott Church in Bath. From 1765 until 1801, that is, for much of Jane's life, George Austen served as the rector of the Anglican parishes at Steventon, Hampshire, and a nearby village. From 1773 until 1796, he supplemented this income by farming and by teaching three or four boys at a time who boarded at his home. Austin's immediate family was large, six brothers, James, 1765-1819, George, 1766-1838, Edward, 1768-1852, Henry Thomas, 1771-1850, Francis William, Frank, 1774 to 1865, Charles John, 1779 to 1852, and one sister, Cassandra Elizabeth, Steventon, Hampshire, 9th January 1773 to 1845, who, like Jane, died unmarried. Cassandra was Austin's closest friend and confidant throughout her life. Of her brothers, Austin felt closest to Henry, who became a banker and, after his bank failed, an Anglican clergyman. Henry was also his sister's literary agent. A memorial plaque on her brother's former home at 10 Henrietta Street, was unveiled on April 29, 1999 by actress Amanda Root, accompanied by Jane Austen's donkey cart from Chawton.
it was while staying here that Jane Austen wrote most of her best letters. His large circle of friends and acquaintances in London included bankers, merchants, publishers, painters, and actors. He provided Austen with a view of social worlds not normally visible from a small parish in rural Hampshire. George was sent to live with the local family at a young age because, as Austen biographer Lafay describes it, he was mentally abnormal and subject to fits. He may also have been deaf and mute. Charles and Frank served in the Navy, both rising to the rank of Admiral. Edward was adopted by his fourth cousin, Thomas Knight, inheriting Knight's estate and taking his name in 1812. Early Life and Education Austin was born on December 16, 1775 at Steventon Rectory and publicly christened on April 5, 1776. After a few months at home, her mother placed Austin with Elizabeth Littlewood, a woman living nearby, who nursed and raised Austin for a year or 18 months. In 1783, according to family tradition, Jane and Cassandra were sent to Oxford to be educated by Mrs. Anne Colley and they moved with her to Southampton later in the year. Both girls caught typhus and Jane nearly died. Austin was subsequently educated at home, until leaving for boarding school with her sister Cassandra early in 1785. The school curriculum probably included some French, spelling, needlework, dancing and music and, perhaps, drama. By December 1786, Jane and Cassandra had returned home because the Austins could not afford to send both of their daughters to school. Austin acquired the remainder of her education by reading books, guided by her father and her brothers James and Henry. Austin apparently had unfettered access both to her father's library and that of her uncle, Warren Hastings, a wealthy opium trader. Together these collections amounted to a large and varied library. Her father was also tolerant of Austin's sometimes risque experiments in writing, and provided both sisters with expensive paper and other materials for their writing and drawing. According to Park Conan, a biographer of Austin, life in the Austin home was lived in an open, amused, easy intellectual atmosphere where the ideas of those with whom the Austins might disagree politically or socially were considered and discussed. After returning from school in 1786, Austin never again lived anywhere beyond the bounds of her immediate family environment. Private theatricals were also a part of Austin's education. From when she was seven until she was thirteen, the family and close friends staged a series of plays, including Richard Sheridan's The Rivals, 1775, and David Garrick's Bon Ton. While the details are unknown, Austin would certainly have joined in these activities, as a spectator at first and as a participant when she was older. Most of the plays were comedies, which suggests one way in which Austin's comedic and satirical gifts were cultivated. In 1788, her portrait may have been commissioned by her great-uncle, Francis Austin. Juvenilia Perhaps as early as 1787, Austin began to write poems, stories, in plays for her own and her family's amusement. Austin later compiled fair copies of 29 of these early works into three bound notebooks, now referred to as the Juvenilia containing pieces originally written between 1787 and 1793. There is manuscript evidence that Austin continued to work on these pieces as late as the period 1809-1811, and that her niece and nephew, Anna and James Edwards Austin, made further additions as late as 1814. Among these works are a satirical novel in letters titled Love and Friendship, in which she mocked popular novels of sensibility, and the history of England, a manuscript of 34 pages accompanied by 13 watercolor miniatures by her sister Cassandra. Austin's history parodied popular historical writing, particularly Oliver Goldsmith's History of England, 1764. Austin wrote, for example, Henry IV ascended the throne of England much to his own satisfaction in the year 1399, after having prevailed on his cousin and predecessor Richard II, to resign it to him and to retire for the rest of his life to Pomfret Castle, where he happened to be murdered. Austin's juvenilia are often, according to scholar Richard Jenkins, boisterous and anarchic. He compares them to the work of 18th-century novelist Lauren Stern and the 20th-century comedy group Monty Python. Adulthood 
As Austin grew into adulthood, she continued to live at her parents' home, carrying out those activities normal for women of her age and social standing. She practiced the fortepiano, assisted her sister and mother with supervising servants, and attended female relatives during childbirth and older relatives on their deathbeds. She sent short pieces of writing to her newborn nieces Fanny Catherine and Jane Anna Elizabeth. Austin was particularly proud of her accomplishments as a seamstress. She also attended church regularly, socialized frequently with friends and neighbors, and read novels, often of her own composition, aloud with her family in the evenings. Socializing with the neighbors often meant dancing either impromptu in someone's home after supper or at the balls held regularly at the assembly rooms in the town hall. Her brother Henry later said that Jane was fond of dancing, and excelled in it. In 1793, Austin began and then abandoned a short play, later entitled Sir Charles Grandison or the Happy Man, a comedy in six acts, which she returned to and completed around 1800. This was a short parody of various school textbook abridgments of Austen's favorite contemporary novel, The History of Sir Charles Grandison, 1753, by Samuel Richardson. Honan speculates that at some point not long after writing Love and Friendship in 1789, Austen decided to write for profit, to make stories her central effort, that is, to become a professional writer. Beginning in about 1793, she began to write longer, more sophisticated works. Between 1793 and 1795, Austen wrote Lady Susan, a short epistolary novel usually described as her most ambitious and sophisticated early work. It is unlike any of Austen's other works. Austen biographer Claire Tomalin describes the heroine of the novella as a sexual predator who uses her intelligence and charm to manipulate, betray, and abuse her victims, whether lovers, friends or family. Tomalin writes. Early Novels After finishing Lady Susan Austin attempted her first full-length novel, Eleanor and Marianne. Her sister Cassandra later remembered that it was read to the family before 1,796 inches and was told through a series of letters. Without surviving original manuscripts, there is no way to know how much of the original draft survived in the novel published in 1811 as Sense and Sensibility. When Austin was 20, Tom Lefroy, a nephew of neighbors, visited Steventon from December 1795 to January 1796. He had just finished a university degree and was moving to London to train as a barrister. Lefroy and Austin would have been introduced at a ball or other neighborhood social gathering, and it is clear from Austin's letters to Cassandra that they spent considerable time together. I am almost afraid to tell you how my Irish friend and I behaved. Imagine to yourself everything most profligate and shocking in the way of dancing and sitting down together. The Lefroy family intervened and sent him away at the end of January. Marriage was impractical, as both Lefroy and Austin must have known. Neither had any money, and he was dependent on a great uncle in Ireland to finance his education and establish his legal career. If Tom Lefroy later visited Hampshire, he was carefully kept away from the Austins, and Jane Austen never saw him again. The sentimental relationship between Jane and Tom is at the center of the 2007 biographical film Becoming Jane. Austen began work on a second novel, First Impressions, in 1796. She completed the initial draft in August 1797 when she was only 21, it later became Pride and Prejudice. As with all of her novels, Austin read the work aloud to her family as she was working on it and it became an established favorite. At this time, her father made the first attempt to publish one of her novels. In November 1797, George Austin wrote to Thomas Cardale, an established publisher in London, to ask if he would consider publishing a manuscript novel, comprised in three vowels. About the length of Miss Burney's Evelina, first impressions, at the author's financial risk. Cardale quickly returned Mr. Austin's letter, Mark declined by return of post. Austin may not have known of her father's efforts. Following the completion of first impressions, Austin returned to Eleanor and Marianne and from November 1797 until mid-1798, revised it heavily. She eliminated the epistolary format in favor of third-person narration and produced something close to sense and sensibility. During the middle of 1798, 
After finishing revisions of Eleanor and Marianne, Austen began writing a third novel with the working title Susan, later Northanger Abbey, a satire on the popular Gothic novel. Austen completed her work about a year later. In early 1803, Henry Austen offered Susan to Benjamin Crosby, a London publisher, who paid P.S. 10 for the copyright. Crosby promised early publication and went so far as to advertise the book publicly as being in the press, but did nothing more. The manuscript remained in Crosby's hands, unpublished, until Austen repurchased the copyright from him in 1816. Bath and Southampton In December 1800, Mr. Austen unexpectedly announced his decision to retire from the ministry, leave Steventon, and move the family to Bath. While retirement and travel were good for the elder Austens, Jane Austen was shocked to be told she was moving from the only home she had ever known. An indication of Austen's state of mind is her lack of productivity as a writer during the time she lived at Bath. She was able to make some revisions to Susan, and she began and then abandoned a new novel, The Watsons, but there was nothing like the productivity of the year 1795 to 1799. Tomalin suggests this reflects the deep depression disabling her as a writer, but Honan disagrees, arguing Austen wrote or revised her manuscripts throughout her creative life, except for a few months after her father died. In December 1802, Austen received her only known proposal of marriage. She and her sister visited Alethea and Catherine Big, old friends who lived near Basingstoke. Their younger brother, Harris Big Wither, had recently finished his education at Oxford and was also at home. Big Wither proposed and Austen accepted. As described by Caroline Austen, Jane's niece, and Reginald Big Wither, a descendant, Harris was not attractive, he was a large, plain-looking man who spoke little, stuttered when he did speak, was aggressive in conversation, and almost completely tactless. However, Austin had known him since both were young and the marriage offered many practical advantages to Austin and her family. He was the heir to extensive family estates located in the area where the sisters had grown up. With these resources, Austin could provide her parents a comfortable old age, give Cassandra a permanent home and, perhaps, assist her brothers in their careers. By the next morning, Austin realized she had made a mistake and withdrew her acceptance. No contemporary letters or diaries describe how Austin felt about this proposal. In 1814, Austin wrote a letter to her niece, Fanny Knight, who had asked for advice about a serious relationship, telling her that having written so much on one side of the question, I shall now turn around and entreat you not to commit yourself farther, and not to think of accepting him unless you really do like him. Anything is to be preferred or endured rather than marrying without affection. In 1804, while living in Bath, Austen started but did not complete a new novel, The Watsons. The story centers on an invalid clergyman with little money and his four unmarried daughters. Sutherland describes the novel as a study in the harsh economic realities of dependent women's lives. Honan suggests, and Tomalin agrees, that Austen chose to stop work on the novel after her father died on January 21, 1805 and her personal circumstances resemble those of her characters too closely for her comfort. Mr. Austen's final illness had struck suddenly, leaving him, as Austen reported to her brother Francis, quite insensible of his own state, and he died quickly. Jane, Cassandra, and their mother were left in a precarious financial situation. Edward, James, Henry, and Frances Austin pledged to make annual contributions to support their mother and sisters. For the next four years, the family's living arrangements reflected their financial insecurity. They lived part of the time in rented quarters in Bath before leaving the city in June 1805 for a family visit to Steventon and Godmersham. They spent the autumn months of that same year in the newly fashionable seaside resort of Worthing, on the Sussex coast, where they resided at Stanford Cottage. It was there that Jane Austen is thought to have written her fair copy of Lady Susan and added its conclusion. Without doubt Jane Austen's observations of early Worthing helped inspire her final but unfinished novel, Sanditon, the story of an up-and-coming seaside resort in Sussex. In 1806, they moved to Southampton, where they shared a house with Frank Austen and his new wife. A large part of this time they spent visiting various branches of the family. On April 5, 1809, 
About three months before the families moved to Chawton, Austin wrote an angry letter to Richard Crosby, offering him a new manuscript of Susan if that was needed to secure immediate publication of the novel, and otherwise requesting the return of the original so she could fund another publisher. Crosby replied he had not agreed to publish the book by any particular time, or at all, and that Austin could repurchase the manuscript for the P.S. 10 he had paid her and fund another publisher. However, Austin did not have the resources to repurchase the book. Charlton Around early 1809, Austin's brother Edward offered his mother and sisters a more settled life, the use of a large cottage in Charlton Village that was part of Edward's nearby state, Charlton House. Jane, Cassandra, and their mother moved into Chawton Cottage on July 7, 1809. In Chawton, life was quieter than it had been since the families moved to Bath in 1800. The Austins did not socialize with the neighboring gentry and entertained only when family visited. Austin's niece Anna described the Austin family's life in Chawton. It was a very quiet life, according to our ideas, but they were great readers and besides the housekeeping our ends occupy themselves in working with the poor and in teaching some girl or boy to read or write. Austin wrote almost daily, but privately, and seems to have been relieved of some household responsibilities to give her more opportunity to write. In this setting, she was able to be productive as a writer once more. Published author During her time at Chawton, Jane Austen successfully published four novels which were generally well received. Through her brother Henry, the publisher Thomas Egerton agreed to publish Sense and Sensibility, which appeared in October 1811. Reviews were favorable and the novel became fashionable among opinion makers. The edition sold out by mid-1813. Austin's earnings from Sense and Sensibility provided her with some financial and psychological independence. Egerton then published Pride and Prejudice, a revision of first impressions, in January 1813. He advertised the book widely and it was an immediate success, garnering three favorable reviews and selling well. By October 1813, Egerton was able to begin selling his second edition. Mansfield Park was published by Egerton in May 1814. While Mansfield Park was ignored by reviewers, it was a great success with the public. All copies were sold within six months and Austen's earnings on this novel were larger than for any of her other novels. Austen learned that the Prince Regent admired her novels and kept a set at each of his residences. In November 1815, the Prince Regent's librarian James Stanner Clark invited Austen to visit the Prince's London residence and hinted Austen should dedicate the forthcoming Emma to the Prince. Though Austen disliked the Prince, she could scarcely refuse the request. She later wrote plan of a novel. According to hints from various quarters, a satiric outline of the perfect novel based on the librarian's many suggestions for a future Austen novel. In mid-1815, Austen moved her work from Egerton to John Murray, a better-known London publisher, who published Emma in December 1815 and a second edition of Mansfield Park in February 1816. Emma sold well but the new edition of Mansfield Park did not, and this failure offset most of the profits Austen earned on Emma. These were the last of Austen's novels to be published during her lifetime. While Murray prepared Emma for publication, Austen began to write a new novel she titled The Elliots, later published as Persuasion. She completed her first draft in July 1816. In addition, shortly after the publication of Emma, Henry Austen repurchased the copyright for Susan from Crosby. Austin was forced to postpone publishing either of these completed novels by family financial troubles. Henry Austin's bank failed in March 1816, depriving him of all of his assets, leaving him deeply in debt and losing Edward, James, and Frank Austin large sums. Henry and Frank could no longer afford the contributions they had made to support their mother and sisters. Illness and Death Early in 1816, Jane Austen began to feel unwell. She ignored her illness at first and continued to work and to participate in the usual round of family activities. By the middle of that year, her decline was unmistakable to Austen and to her family, and Austen's physical condition began a long, slow, and irregular deterioration culminating in her death the following year. 
The majority of Austin biographers rely on Dr. Vincent Cope's tentative 1964 retrospective diagnosis and list her cause of death as Addison's disease. However, her final illness has also been described as Hodgkin's lymphoma. Recent work by Catherine White of Britain's Addison's Disease Self-Help Group suggests that Austin probably died of bovine tuberculosis, a disease, now, commonly associated with drinking unpasteurized milk. One contributing factor or cause of her death, discovered by Linda Robinson Walker and described in the winter 2010 issue of Persuasions Online, might be Brill's Inser disease, a recurrent form of typhus, which she had as a child. Brill's Inser disease is to typhus as shingles is to chicken pox. When a victim of typhus endures stress, malnutrition or another infection, typhus can recur as Brill's Inser disease. Austin continued to work in spite of her illness. She became dissatisfied with the ending of the Elliots and rewrote the final two chapters, finishing them on August 6, 1816. In January 1817, Austin began work on a new novel she called The Brothers, later titled Sanditon upon its first publication in 1925, and completed 12 chapters before stopping work in mid-March 1817, probably because her illness prevented her from continuing. Austin made light of her condition to others describing it as bile and rheumatism, but as her disease progressed she experienced increasing difficulty walking or finding the energy for other activities. By mid-April, Austin was confined to her bed. In May, Cassandra and Henry escorted Jane to Winchester for medical treatment. Austin died in Winchester on July 18, 1817, at the age of 41. Henry, through his clerical connections, arranged for his sister to be buried in the north aisle of the nave of Winchester Cathedral. The epitaph composed by her brother James praises Austin's personal qualities, expresses hope for her salvation, mentions the extraordinary endowments of her mind, but does not explicitly mention her achievements as a writer. Posthumous Publication After Austin's death Cassandra and Henry Austin arranged with Murray for the publication of Persuasion and Northanger Abbey as a set in December 1817. Henry Austin contributed a biographical note which for the first time identified his sister as the author of the novels. Tomalin describes it as a loving and polished eulogy. Sales were good for a year, only 321 copies remained and sold at the end of 1818, and then declined. Murray disposed of the remaining copies in 1820, and Austin's novels remained out of print for 12 years. In 1832, publisher Richard Bentley purchased the remaining copyrights to all of Austin's novels and, beginning in either December 1832 or January 1833, published them in five illustrated volumes as part of his standard novel series. In October 1833, Bentley published the first collected edition of Austin's works. Since then, Austin's novels have been continuously in print. Reception Contemporary Responses Austin's works brought her little personal renown because they were published anonymously. Although her novels quickly became fashionable among opinion makers, such as Princess Charlotte Augusta, daughter of the Prince Regent, they received only a few published reviews. Most of the reviews were short and on balance favorable, although superficial and cautious. They most often focused on the moral lessons of the novels. Sir Walter Scott, a leading novelist of the day, contributed one of them, anonymously. Using the review as a platform from which to defend the then disreputable genre of the novel, he praised Austen's realism. The other important early review of Austen's works was published by Richard Whitney in 1821. He drew favorable comparisons between Austen and such acknowledged greats as Homer and Shakespeare, praising the dramatic qualities of her narrative. Scott and Whateley set the tone for almost all subsequent 19th century Austen criticism. 19th century Because Austen's novels failed to conform to romantic and Victorian expectations that powerful emotion authenticated by an egregious display of sound and color in the writing, 19th century critics and audiences generally preferred the works of Charles Dickens and George Eliot. Though Austen's novels were republished in Britain beginning in the 1830s and remained steady sellers, they were not best sellers. 
Austin had many admiring readers in the 19th century who considered themselves part of a literary elite. They viewed their appreciation of Austin's works as a mark of their cultural taste. Philosopher and literary critic George Henry Lewes expressed this viewpoint in a series of enthusiastic articles published in the 1840s and 1850s. This theme continued later in the century with novelist Henry James, who referred to Austen several times with approval and on one occasion ranked her with Shakespeare, Trevance, and Henry Fielding as among the fine painters of life. The publication of James Edward Austen Lee's A Memoir of Jane Austen in 1869 introduced Austen to a wider public as Dear Aunt Jane, the respectable maiden aunt. Publication of the memoir spurred the reissue of Austen's novels. The first popular editions were released in 1883 and fancy illustrated editions and collector sets quickly followed. Author and critic Leslie Stephen described the popular mania that started to develop for Austen in the 1880s as Austenolatry. Around the start of the 20th century, members of the literary elite reacted against the popularization of Austen. They referred to themselves as genites in order to distinguish themselves from the masses who did not properly understand their works. For example, James responded negatively to what he described as a beguiled infatuation with Austen, a rising tide of public interest that exceeded Austen's intrinsic merit and interest. During the last quarter of the 19th century, the first books of criticism on Austen were published. In fact, after the publication of the memoir, more criticism was published on Austen in two years than had appeared in the previous 50. 20th Century and Beyond Several important works paved the way for Austen's novels to become a focus of academic study. The first important milestone was a 1911 essay by Oxford Shakespearean scholar A.C. Bradley, which is generally regarded as the starting point for the serious academic approach to Jane Austen. In it, he established the groupings of Austen's early and late novels, which are still used by scholars today. The second was R. W. Chapman's 1923 edition of Austen's collected works. Not only was it the first scholarly edition of Austen's works, it was also the first scholarly edition of any English novelist. The Chapman text has remained the basis for all subsequent published editions of Austen's works. With the publication in 1939 of Mary Lascelles's Jane Austen and Her Art, the academic study of Austen took hold. Lascelles's innovative work included an analysis of the books Jane Austen read and the effect of her reading on her work, an extended analysis of Austen's style, and her narrative art. At the time, Concern arose over the fact that academics were taking over Austen criticism and it was becoming increasingly esoteric, a debate that has continued to the beginning of the 21st century. In the spurt of revisionist views in the 1940s, scholars approached Austen more skeptically and argued that she was a subversive writer. These revisionist views, together with F. R. Leavis's and Ian Watt's pronouncement that Austen was one of the great writers of English fiction did much to cement Austen's reputation amongst academics. They agreed that she combined qualities of interiority and irony, realism and satire to form an author superior to both. The period since World War II has seen more scholarship on Austen using a diversity of critical approaches, including feminist theory, and perhaps most controversially, postcolonial theory. However, the continuing disconnection between the popular appreciation of Austen particularly by modern genetes, and the academic appreciation of Austen has widened considerably. Jane Austen was the favorite novelist of political philosopher Leo Strauss. Sequels, prequels, and adaptations of almost every sort have been based on the novels of Jane Austen, from softcore pornography to fantasy. Beginning in the middle of the 19th century, Austen family members published conclusions to her incomplete novels and by 2000 there were over 100 printed adaptations. The first film adaptation was the 1940 MGM production of Pride and Prejudice starring Laurence Olivier and Greer Garson. BBC television dramatizations, which were first produced in the 1970s, attempted to adhere meticulously to Austen's plots, characterizations, and settings. In 1995 a great wave of Austen adaptations began to appear, with Ang Lee's film of Sense and Sensibility, for which screenwriter and star Emma Thompson won an Academy Award, and the BBC's immensely popular TV miniseries Pride and Prejudice, starring Jennifer L. and Colin Firth. 
books and scripts that use the general storyline of Austen's novels but change or otherwise modernize the story also became popular at the end of the 20th century. For example, Clueless, 1995, Amy Hackerling's updated version of Emma, which takes place in Beverly Hills, became a cultural phenomenon and spawned its own television series. In 1994, American literary critic Harold Bloom placed Austin among the greatest Western writers of all time. In a 2002 poll to determine whom the UK public considers the greatest British people in history, Austin was ranked number 70 in the list of the 100 greatest Britons. In 2003, Austin's Pride and Prejudice came second in the BBC's The Big Read, a national poll to find the nation's best loved book. In 2007, the article Rejecting Jane by British author David Lesman, which examined how Austin would fare in the modern-day publishing industry, achieved worldwide attention when Austin's work, submitted under a pseudonym, was rejected by numerous publishers. List of works Novels Sense and Sensibility, 1811, Pride and Prejudice, 1813, Mansfield Park, 1814, Emma. 1815, Northanger Abbey, 1818, Posthumous, Persuasion, 1818, Posthumous, Short Fiction, Lady Susan, 1794, 1805, Unfinished Fiction, The Watsons, 1804, Sanditon, 1817, Other Works, Sir Charles Grandison, Adapted Play, 1793, 1800, Plan of a Novel, 1815, Poems, 1796 to 1817, Prayers, 1796 to 1817, Letters, 1796 to 1817, Frederick and Elfrida, Jack and Alice, Edgar and Emma, Henry and Eliza, The Adventures of Mr. Harley, Sir William Montag, Memoirs of Mr. Clifford, The Beautiful Cassandra, Amelia Webster, The Visit, The Mystery, The Three Sisters, a Beautiful Description, The Generous Curate, O to Pity, Love and Friendship, Leslie Castle, The History of England, A Collection of Letters, The Female Philosopher, The First Act of a Comedy, A Letter from a Young Lady, A Tour Through Wales, A Tale, Evelyn, Catherine, or The Bower. Popular Culture Olivia Williams portrayed Austen in the 2007 BBC drama Miss Austen Regrets. Anne Hathaway portrayed a young Austen in the 2007 British-Irish film Becoming Jane.